Hey, my friends, what's going on? So I got good news with the short block for the WRX. So I brought everything inside last night and I let it sit for about 12 hours, remeasured everything and everything came out spot on. Having all of the metals that you're gonna be using for an engine build in like a temperature controlled environment is ideal. Like when I was doing measurements out here in the garage, my measurements were all over the place uh, because I wasn't getting consistent readings. The way metallurgy works is metals will contract and expand based off of the temperature that they're left in. So by bringing everything inside, we're able to normalize temperatures on our short block the crankshaft, the connecting rods, all that stuff, and everything measured out solid at about two to two and a half thousandths of an inch. So that means we're ready to put this bad boy together. So that way we actually have an engine put together for a lovely hatchback here because I feel like this thing's been already sitting way too long. So I'm just gonna kind of jet through building this thing, uh, probably just time lapse most of it. I need to get the 07 STI that's outside in here. Um, so that way I can start stripping it down. So I kind of want to get this built. Shouldn't take me too long, maybe two, two and a half hours to make sure everything's spot on. Uh, I've got our crank, our rods, everything good to go. I just cleaned this. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to like jump into building this engine. So that way I can get it like knocked out and done with. So start putting some rods on a crankshaft and then get a crankshaft into our engine, baby. First part's done, which is kind of the crappy part, which is getting your connecting rods onto your crankshaft. So, bolt stretch on all these is five and a half to six thousandths of an inch. They're all pretty, so that one feels a little tight. Why do you feel tight? You feel good. Ah, uh, they all feel solid. They all feel the same. This one was just like, huh? It was catching on the rag down there, that's why. Sick! Now that we have this done, let's go ahead and pop our case halves back apart. Pull out all the bearings. We're gonna pull them out one by one, clean the main, clean the bearing, put it back in, lube everything up, get our crankshaft put in there, get our O-rings put in there, get our sealant put on here, and then start torquing this bad boy down. And then we can get our pistons in, which I have to go to the shop later to grab my piston ring grinding tool because I still haven't grabbed it yet, but. So the really annoying part is done, which is getting the case hab sealed up and torqued down. So our short block is pretty much done. All we got left is pistons, uh, piston rings, get those in here. Uh, Melanie's gonna be home here soon. Then we're gonna swing over to the shop to grab my piston ring grinder so that way I can get the pistons knocked out. Uh, like I said before, this is garbage actually. Those, that's all garbage. We are using these beautiful sport compact pistons from Manly. Uh, I used these in the Evo also, very good piston for the price. So those will be going in here soon. And then we can get our short block done. I do want to apologize as I know this engine building video hasn't been as in depth as the ones that I've done in the past. They haven't been as involved, uh, mainly with just the temperatures outside, uh, making sure I get things right. I, I try to focus heavily on the engine itself instead of filming the process, uh, with the exception of the ones that I've done in the past where it's like heavily in detail for how to build these things, how to put them together. So the main thing is just like focusing on making sure things are right. Like I had to take off one of the connecting rods because I was going back and forth with the camera um, because I didn't remember. I did do it right, but I didn't remember if I put the tang to tang on the connecting rod when I put it on the crank. So I just like to focus when putting these things together, how I do it. But I gotta pull some door cards off the 07 STI out there because I got someone buying those today. So I'm gonna pull those off real quick and then We'll be back putting this thing together. Couple hours in the future, uh, I had to go get my piston ring grinder from the shop because uh, I didn't want to buy a new one because it's like 30 bucks. But I'll link this down below because it works great. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get all my rings clearanced. Uh, the way I'm gonna set my rings up is the top ring's gonna be set to zero or 0 0.014, bottom ring 0 0.017. I'm not gonna show you guys grinding these because I'm gonna grind all the rings first, get them set up on the pistons, and then I'll show you guys installing the pistons on here. It's not bad, it's super easy to do. Everyone freaks out about building Subaru engines. They're honestly stupid bit easy to build so let me go grind down some piston rings get these things set up then we can put pistons in this bad boy and then we can get the oil pan on try to get this thing as built as we can today maybe the oil pump too Now 
Look at that gorgeousness. We have a built short block ready to go for the hatch now, dude. I'm so pumped for this thing. Uh, like I said, target for this engine is about 600 to 650. Uh, the engine will do, or this will hold more than that, but it feels pretty good turning it over also. Super smooth. Sick. A lot of people get freaked out about building their own engines. It's really not that bad, I promise. As long as you take your time, make sure all your measurements are good, your engine will come out solid. So just to run over engine tolerances one more time, top ring is set to 0 0.014, bottom ring is 0 0.017. The mains are all, the main rod bearing clearances are all about two to two and a half thousandths of an inch. Uh, rod bearings are about two to two and a half thou also. So sick, uh, I know some people are gonna ask piston to wall clearance. I don't do that. I let the machine shop do that when they bore and hone the engine for me. Uh, Cause I just buy the pistons directly throughout front. So that way they can bore and hone uh, the cylinders to the pistons to make sure that everything matches up solid. So now that this is taken care of, I'm gonna start getting some of the accessories put on here. I might get the oil pump put on. Uh, I was cleaning it earlier. I don't know if I'm, cause I'm reusing my oil pump. It only has like a thousand miles on it. There's no point in buying a new oil pump. So we'll get the oil pan on, oil pickup, windage tray, motor mount, uh, maybe oil pump. I don't know. See how spicy I'm feeling, daddy-o. I just wanted to take a second while I'm doing this. I'm getting the oil pump ready to go back on the uh, the engine, you guys. Uh, this is a Roger Clark Motorsport 11 millimeter oil pump. Uh, I went ahead, I popped the back plate off. I packed the oil pump with Vaseline. This will help build oil pressure on the first start. Um, on top of that, I'm gonna go ahead and lock tight down all the screws. RCM does not do this. Uh, Subaru oil pumps are known for these screws to back out. So I'm just gonna put a little blue Loctite on them get this thing reassembled, get it sealed up, toss it back on the engine, but I just wanted to take a moment. Uh, it's kind of important, just pack your oil pumps. It takes like five minutes, just pack them. Head studs are in, everything is ready to go. Oil pump is back on. This thing is ready to party, you guys. I got the rear main ceiling, got this rear access panel. I have to do the oil separator plate back here. I bought a new one, so I'm just kind of waiting for it to show up, but I wanted to get this as done as possible. Like I said, hatchback is my pro priority right now. A, I want a car that is like comfy to daily drive again. Uh, B, I want this thing to make power. And the big reason C is I wanna start on the other projects like the Coupe and the STI. Um, as much as I love building the hatch, the hatch is one of my favorite cars that I've had. I just want it working again. We're hours in the future at this point. Matt and I spent the past couple of hours like cleaning up and whatnot, organizing. If you guys saw the last video when we got the Hawkeye, you'll remember the mountain of boxes that was over there. Now, I, now we can put another car there. We made like five dump runs to get rid of all that stuff. I cleaned the garage, organized everything, so we can actually work again. So our motor for the WRX is built. So at this point, I just need to do the heads, but I'm waiting for the drill bit to come in, the drill bit and the reamer, because I'm just gonna drill my own heads to half inch and then ream them to half inch. Since we're using half inch head studs, there's no point in sending them out and having someone else do it. It's totally doable with a, with a drill press. So in the meantime, we also got the Hawkeye pushed in. I'm gonna start tearing this thing down here in a little bit, but I also got in the front brake rotors and the rear toe arms for the WRX, which I wanna get on there. Like I said, WRX main priority, wanna get that car back up and running. So even though I have to take the front rotors back off, let's go ahead and put them on for right now. So that way I can at least put the wheels on and put the car on the ground, steal the quick jacks, use them for the Hawkeye and start tearing down the hot guy. Hot, Hawkeye, not hot guy. Hawkeye. I'm also gonna go ahead and toss on our rear toe arms. These are just SPC adjustable toe arms. They're gonna let me adjust the toe in the rear of the car. So, super easy. I'm just gonna toss these guys on, toss those front brake rotors on, uh, and then I think I'm gonna jump on the Hawkeye next since I'm waiting for more parts to get delivered for this thing. Sick. 
Sick, adjustable rear tow arms are on. They are just right down there, that one black rod. Uh, I got the front rotors on here for now. I'm gonna have to take them back off. On the other side, I'm waiting on the dust shield to come in for the rotor itself. On this side, I think I got the wrong axle because it's definitely not long enough. Um, and I can't pull the axle all the way through, so I'm gonna have to buy another axle. I'm not quite sure what this one is for. It could be for a GD chassis, I'm not 100% sure. But it's whatever, I'll just order another one. It kind of sucks because those things are like 150 bucks each, but whatever. Uh, next up, we're gonna get the interior kind of put back together because I kind of like half-assed put it back together from when I did the DCCD install. And like I said, just trying to knock out like all this stuff with the WRX to get it back on the road and back like ready to go. So let's hop in the car and start putting it back together because right now it's kind of a hot mess. Interior is all put back together, looking good. Uh, I have a new shift boot coming for that one because apparently, uh, well, I mean, I already knew this. You can't use the WRX shift boot for an STI shifter. It just doesn't work. Now, I've got the stuff to fix the last little drivetrain bits like the broken transmission mount and whatnot. I went ahead and I ordered the Group N STI one, uh, but I'm gonna wait to put this in because I also have a short shifter and a whole bunch of shifter bushings coming for this thing. Cause I felt like since it's the daily, why not spoil it a little bit with the good stuffs, right? So I'll have a video coming out on like how to like totally refresh your drivetrain components to make your stock shifter feel as good as freaking possible. But I think that's where I'm gonna leave it on this one. The, there was just a whole bunch of like background shit that I had to do in this video and I'm sorry you guys, it was just all over the place. But on the bright side, we have our 750 wheel horsepower capable engine built, ready to go. I just have to go ahead and fix that, or not fix, but build the heads, um, which we'll do in an upcoming video. I'm not too worried about it right now. Probably do that, I'll probably start on that in a couple days. I gotta tear apart this Hawkeye. So in the next video, we're gonna strip down this Hawkeye for all the components that we need out of it for the 2.5 RS to make ourselves an RSTI. I'm excited for that car. Like I said, as if I could keep the Hawkeye and it wasn't a title problem, I totally would. But like I said, that's all I got for you guys on this one. So if you like the video, you know what to do. Go ahead, hit that like button, turn it black, blue, green, yellow, purple, silver, sign, whatever color it turns for you. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you wanna be one of these corners, no idea which one I'll put it in quite yet. But with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. So peace out, homies.